Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Wellness by Design today. I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer, and I'm really excited about our guest today, Bobby Vogel. She's a clairvoyant healer, and I, I just love this topic because it's become so apparent to me that we are energy and everything is energy, and that's how we can heal. So, Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's fun to be here. And if anyone is watching, if you want to post any comments, well, questions, whatever, go ahead and put, and put them in there and we'll get to them. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Bobby. <clears throat> Bobby Vogel is a powerfully gifted clairvoyant and transcendence guide. She is de de dedicated to leading others in the embodiment of their innate power as light beings. From this place, all things are possible. We become unlimited. <laughs> she founded Etheric Medicine, Inc., where, where she offers both private and group sessions where she leads people to utilize their wounds as tools for transcendence and ultimately honor their soul's chosen purpose, bridging the gap between science and medicine. Bobby, this is so exciting, and uh, I, I'd love to hear a little bit about your, your background and what brought you into this field. I mean, we don't wake up you know, right. as babies, knowing we're clairvoyant. Right. <laughs> How does that happen? Well, for me, the long story short, because it is a long story, I've been a million things. I was a paramedic in Chicago and Oakland, got injured, and then reincarnated into a real estate agent <laughs> <laughs> in the Bay Area. And I was a top producing realtor for 17 years. And I decided I had always wanted to live in Venice on the beach, Venice, California. And so I moved down there at this, what I thought was an opportune time. And it was, as it turned out, but uh, one thing led to another basically. And I ended up losing everything, you know, things just at anything, you know, people used to call me Midas in San Francisco, in the Bay area. And they said, every house you touch or show, you sell it. And even then I realized, I realized now that that was possible to be able to connect the soul of a home to the soul of a person. And I didn't understand I was doing that at the time, but that's why it was so easy for me. It was, I wasn't a salesperson. It was effortless to connect to that vibration um, for each, you know, and so which everything does have a vibration, as you said, so even a home, even, a, you know, and so uh, when, you know, so things just started falling apart for me when I moved, I went from, you know, I drove my Mercedes Benz into town and I ended up having to leave it in the parking lot at Ross, take off my plates, leave the keys and they, you know, to repossess it, I walked home and I was in an apartment, which I was always, I was living in a home for years and years and to a sheriff sticker on the door and uh, no food. It was just, it was crazy because everything I used to be able to do, all the tools to be the Phoenix rising over and over and over again. I had, you know, lots of trauma and things in my history and um, I'm adopted and all, you know, these other things, which are all amazing and, you know, chosen and powerful, right? So, but I couldn't shift this, right? And I didn't know, I had, my parents had both passed away. I was there with no family. My adopted son was, uh, my uh, circumstances of his birth, he was high level behavioral issues and which was part of the issue and I found I was so terrified, so depleted that I, and I thought I had just screwed up so bad. So I came up with a suicide plan and I was five days. It was, a, I'll never, it was a Wednesday and I dropped my son off at school and I only had a little bit of time uh, before he'd end up having to come back home. <laughs> And I went in my room and started having a pillow fight with God, really. And I wasn't, you know, I was in and out of my connection with, you know, even spirituality or, you know, God. I was too busy surviving, you know, and I think a lot of people understand what that means. Um, and so I had 
a real plan to, I say, leave, you know, um, on Monday, I'd save my son's meds up and everything. <clears throat> and I know from my experience as a paramedic, when you go to that place, you're serious about it. And I was at peace and ready to just be done being so depleted and terrified. And so I was booger crying, throwing up, beating the pillow against the wall, screaming, what have I ever done? Why did I do that so bad? Why am I this big of a piece of shit? Like, you know, I hope it's, because this is what a low moment for you. Well, well, you know what, I I now understand it's like a near death experience for me, because for me, that's what it took. It doesn't take that for everybody. But as I was screaming, God effing help me, with boogers, all of a sudden I heard you still, I said, what is it? Do I need to come back and hit the reset button? And, you know, and, and I heard, and if I need to, I will, but you're going to need to intervene here if I'm not supposed to come back because within a really big way. And I heard you still have healing to do. Like I heard it very clearly, not, you know, and I heard my human voice say out loud. So I was in another realm, which they now understand. And I said, it's not that I don't want, I'm not trying to renege on what I said I would do. I just don't know what it is. Will you please lead me to it? Because I want to do it. And it, that's a higher knowing, you know, I, and I understood coming that close to death really was like this higher knowing that I came here as we all did. There were things that I said I would heal and, and things that I said I would do and I wanted to do that. And, but I was still, you know, so I said, you know, intervene in one way and I'm trying, I'm shortening the story, but that intervention came on Sunday, a day before, you know, less than 24 hours away where, you know, God was, I went to Agape and within 30 seconds, I could hear my parents and God non-denominational speaking to me about my circumstance and, and, and the details of it. And I understand now, oh, yes, that's what's, that's absolutely what spirit does, you know, to, speaks to us in ways that we need to understand that, you know, they're here in subtle ways. And I, and from that place, I, I left there feeling so loved and, and I knew that my parents were with me and that I had been heard and that that was the intervention that I had asked for. And it, that I say, you know, that's where faith was born for me was the asking that was my asking and my receiving and that's what's possible for all of us, you know, but, but, but asking with every cell of our being and then, yeah. and then not having um, an expectation of the receiving is really, that's what's coming through right now. It's like, um, and, and this is, you know, I'm doing groups right now myself with, with people and one of the most prevalent um stumbling blocks, I guess we can say, or frustrations for people right now is that the spirit calls it the furrowed brow. You know, people are, um, and it's not a judgment. It's just, it's like to help people be relieved of that frustration. It's like, we don't communicate from our human mind. Our human mind is so limited. So our guides, the spirit doesn't communicate in that way. So we when we have the expectation, you're asking, okay, give me the answer right now. I'm listening, I'm listening. I don't hear anything, I don't hear anything. And then we go into a tailspin about it and we're missing the subtle message that is coming through because it doesn't look like what we want it to look like. Yeah, we, we're we not, we're, we're expecting it's gonna be perfectly clear like someone's talking to us and it may come in a different package. But you were at, you were very, yeah open because you were at such a low and low place right well, right yeah and it opened me up like that getting to that place for me you know opened me up to because I was stripped of everything else right like I was it was like I was stripped almost of my human mind enough mm. to where I opened 
to a different possibility, you know, instead of trying to do all the things I used to do that used to work, but we're in such a different vibration. And this was, you know, six, seven years ago now, and we're really in a different vibration. But anyway, so I just, one thing led to another. I did, you know, an ayahuasca ceremony, which connected me to a real knowing of what a badass I am. <laughs> Reliving, you know, re-experiencing a lot of trauma, but taking my power back off. It's just this, it's this path. And then uh, somebody, a, a, a wonderful um, support, a uh, long time, she doesn't like to be called a psychic, but she had said, it's time for you to find a teacher. And I was like, a teacher for what? And she's like, well, you're, I mean, you're very connected to, you know, to spirit, your gifts. You're like, you need to start like building on that and being in service to people. And I was like, me? Like, I was just going to commit suicide. You know what I mean? Because I felt like such a piece of crap. And so I had to continue. So I wanted to continue in my own healing because I still had those feelings. I didn't have the feeling of that, but I wanted to heal the feelings of shame and the feelings of, you know, powerlessness and smallness. And so I could step in to whatever it is I said I would do with a vengeance, you know, with, 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 you know, with this level of reverence for um, my purpose and other people. And so I was, I uh, was led to the Akashic records and then began doing that and with Linda Howe, who's a dear friend. I mean, we had been friends for 20 years and it's when her face popped up on Facebook, I was like, oh, there she is, you know? So I utilized the Akashic records for myself for my own healing, which is also what we all are needing to do as well right now is, is focusing on self first because the rest will come. Yeah. The rest. So true. Yeah. If you ask to be led to what it is you said you would do when you came in and took this body, when you incarnated, if you simply ask, what did my soul, right? What did my brilliant, powerful soul regardless of what I'm experiencing here in the physical, this illusion, <laughs> physical world, regardless of all those things, what is it I said I would do? It, you, you might have signed up to, you know, shine shoes or teach children or do all these, it, it, which are equally as powerful, you know? And so for me, um, I, I, I began healing in the Akashic records and, uh, communing, really uh, focusing solely not on what was next, not on what would come next, and not about anyone but myself and my own healing so that I could stand in service or whatever, but feel better. And that's when one day I was taught by God, you know, uh, the breathing, the light exercise as in my own healing and uh, you know, because I had asked if I was in the right body to serve in the way that it was becoming evident that I was meant to serve. And this was, I was in my garage, you know, communing and <clears throat> with with my guides and God non-denominational. And that's when it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a story, but I heard stand <laughs> up and I was taught, that's when I was taught that I was a light body. We're all light bodies. And I was in walk through it. There's a video on my YouTube about it, but it's just been this beautiful path, you know? And um, I had wanted to be a doctor since I was a little kid. My mom said that was the only thing I ever wanted to be. I couldn't even pronounce it yet. And that's what I wanted to be. And so it's interesting to, um, to, to, I morphed out of the Akashic records and started being taught my own medicine, spirit guided. And it's, it's, it's such a long story, but a beautiful story, but it was more like starting to be taught, like flanked by spirit doctors, taught like, oh my gosh, that sexual abuse experience that this woman 
in front of me because I would, you know, that's when clairvoyance, I started being connected clairvoyance, mediumship, uh, people on the other side started coming through. And I, this is, I wasn't even expecting it, you know, but they're coming through to teach me how to dismantle the density in the etheric body, which I didn't even know what that meant. Um, let's let's hear a little bit about that. So you're you're called etheric, but you practice as etheric medicine, or um, is that did I get that right? Etheric medicine. And so I, I find it really interesting where you talk about densities because it's it's densities like in vibration. I'm imagining. Is that correct? And how how is it? So how how does it look when you help someone when they come to see you? They've got an issue. How does that look? Well, it's literally different for everybody. There's, right. there's not one session that is the same because we are all so uniquely well us. You know, there is no. It is true. There's no other soul like us with a purpose. But let me. So instead of bottom lining what I was just saying, for instance, the, 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 the way that I was shown for the first time, I, I was opening people's records, right? Akashic records, because that's what I knew to do, right? And so I, I stay in that guidance until it changes. So and there's a pathway prayer, you know, at the, the process to follow. So I was doing that. And one, and so I had given a a uh, free session at my stepson's uh, school raffle. And this woman, I was doing sessions out of my house, you know, because I, I was still selling real estate until further notice. <laughs> and, and spirit notice. And so this this woman who won the raffle was a young, she's 34 years old, a military wife. And she showed up at my door just completely depleted. I could barely like raise her chin up to look at me. She had never done anything like this before. I had never heard of etheric anything at the time. And she said, he tells me that um, Western medicine, that she's had level 10 plus pain every time she urinated for the since she had her child 11 years ago every single time and she's had every intervention medicine and they were getting they said that all we can do is remove your bladder we don't know what else to do for you so of course she's telling me this and i'm talking to my guides like really you know what what, what do i do here? you know what i mean because i don't have anything that's roped i wait to be told what to do for each person so I was asking them and a bit inti not intimidated, but like, like, well, how do I help? How do I help? Right. And I had her lay down and which I can't wait to be more in person with people again. Um, I had her lay and I tune in and I was taught in iOS that, that, that my right hand shoots. I'm sure a lot of people got this very intense energy and I use this, these fingers for blue light it's fascinating well to me it is and so so i <laughs> so which is all that matters i guess and so i send light so i was taught I, again i'm spirit taught so i send light through and i begin at just asking you know and seeing for me <clears throat> it is like a developer right it's like so we flow because we're light beings you know and whatever is not light is dark or dense or stagnant and spirit prioritizes for each person what it is they're going to work on and why they brought people so they have this priority this agenda that is not mine and so i just so my attention is brought to certain so for her I could see um, swelling. I could see heat, and I what looks like heat, I, I, you know, uh, and swelling down in her pelvic area, and almost like these. They had the swelling had actually like formed sort of like a gate, if you will. <laughs> and this, this is what it looks like to me. And so, um, and then I was like, well. What do we do? How did that get there? And then her grandmother on the other side shows up right here next to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the most important piece. Sorry, guys. 
So I was tuning in like that, like I always had done, and I was trying to remember the pathway prayer process to open her records, which is what I had been doing. And I couldn't remember it. I couldn't even remember the first word, and I was panicking. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, you know? And then I heard, that's not what you're, you, you have your own way. And you don't, that's not what we're using. Basically, that's not what we're using anymore. And I, and all of a sudden, the whole thing just started for me. I didn't have to do, it's just, like, I was just stuck flooded with information. The grandmother showed up, started being a little bossy. It was really cute. And then because it meant a lot to, to the client as well. And she started showing the grandmother on her, on her on her granddaughter's behalf started so that I could see that gate. And the grandmother told me, I rewatched um, a violent sexual thing momentarily to understand that that's the the wound that was had created this level of density and and i was seeing her light bodies i so i was still calling it just the, the light body because that's all i knew and that it was and i watched how it came in to the light body which is now the etheric body and i watched how that wound and the beliefs started being formed around that experience, that trauma created, and I was watching, and I, so now I understand her higher mind, which is where I work a lot with people now who can't access it. Her higher mind was sharing with me what her human brain was believing about herself because of that experience. And so all yeah, it's fascinating. So all of these things were culminated into this at first stagnation that nobody knew to clear, right? And this is really funny because I, Montel Williams is a good a good friend of mine, and I was been telling him this for five years or something, and you know, and he's like, "Bobby, you know, people aren't ready for this, right?" And I'm like, "Well, they're gonna be because it's the truth of us, right?" And now here we are. You know, but he was brave enough to have me on his podcast several times to talk about it because wow. <laughs> he, he's a champ. But so I watch all these things. And when you're in that higher realm, right, this isn't Bobby human brain experiencing this. This is like, oh, yeah, psh, of course. Like, this is this is who we are. This is simple. It's not out of the realm, right? And so I'm like, so well, what do we do to help? her and what do we do to dismantle it and then a spirit told me to stand up and it was funny because the grandma moved out of my way so I, I could go around to the left and I stood and I asked and I had my hands over her you know pelvis and all, the grandma stayed up by her head and all of a sudden I was flanked by these two spirit doctors and it was like they were they almost like scalpel you know they were showing me first what to do and then like handing me the scalpel almost and I was like I had tears pouring down my face because I was like <laughs> I was so humbled as I am literally every day in every single session like my eyes are welling um because it's it's just it's so it's just so incredible and I, and I am humbled and grateful and I began doing this to first our focus was that swollen gate. And of course it made sense to me. Oh, ever she had when she urinates, it has to try to pass through this very heated, swollen, whether it's physically swollen or in the etheric body swollen, it's the same thing because our etheric body actually comes first and our physical body is the hologram of the etheric. It's not the other way around. So everything in the etheric actually ends up being far more important than even what is in the physical because they can't leave the physical without leaving the etheric first. That's a fact. 
And we didn't know that. Well, some people probably knew that, but I didn't know that. And so that's why the breathing light is so vital. So we, I started dismantling in this, in these ways, right? One thing after another, just doing what I was told to do and shown to do. And, and then I had my hands over and all of a sudden my hands went straight through her. That was my experience. My light hands went straight. My etheric hands, now I'll call them that, went straight through her. And I was like, <gasps> like I opened my eyes to look and, and then I closed my eyes again. And it was like, God chuckled, you know, and, and really it, it was because there was this, um, this like this beautiful like almost humor because it was it was it was it was cute probably that I was so right and then I heard this is God's work and I you know I'm like I'm here for it and and that's when I I said I'm here for whatever this is and we continue to do this work and she went home and was at a level three pain for the first time in 11 years. And we, I, I did free sessions with her, I think for six weeks or something, cause I was so committed uh, to following it all the way through. And she's pain free and lost 40 pounds and they're, they're living somewhere. I, you know, she, her whole, her whole family's whole life changed. And I, since I couldn't open the records anymore, I asked my peeps, spirit, well, you know, because you need a website, right? You need to tell people something like, what do you do? You know, what's the name of what you do? Because I was calling it Akashic Medium because I didn't know. And remember, I was a realtor, right? So, like, do I need business cards? You know, like, I wasn't sure. Practical. <laughs> How do I get, how do I find clients? And so when I asked, what is this we're doing? I heard etheric medicine. And I didn't even know what etheric meant, but I went on GoDaddy literally right in that moment. And I put in etheric medicine. Click. Because <laughs> it was so big. Funny. And then I Googled it. I like, I, I checked out my car, you know, bought the website. And then I was like, what is this etheric, you know? And then I was like, oh, all my hair stood, like probably higher than it is now, you know? All my hair stood, because I was like, wow, no way. And from there, it just, I just, so then, and, and so when I asked, how do I find client? I mean, what do you, how do you do that? Like, what, what, tell me about this, you know? I have to eat, right? And, and I have a family and all these things. And they said, we will send you who we want you to work with. And that has been, and I was like, all right, well, let's roll. And I saw like velvet ropes. You know how they have in the fancy clubs? Yeah. You know, I saw these beautiful, deep maroon, wine colored velvet ropes and spirit was ushering people into each line and they had there's like they're showing me four right now which is cool i didn't see that before but these lines and it's you know through the chaos of you know this wasn't an industry at the time right it wasn't this crazy chaotic frenetic you know being in service wasn't an industry yet. And it through all of this, the one thing that has kept me really grounded in my own purpose has helped me is remembering, oh, I don't have to clamor mm -hmm. because spirit's got this one. My God, like I'm here, like the people that I signed up to work and be in service to and help be on the journey of healing that's already agreed upon. I don't have to force it. I don't have to, right? Which is why I've stayed in my own. You asked me before we got on if I knew somebody and it's so funny, but the truth is like, I, I just, I'm like, I'm staying in here in the knowing that like, hey, I, my 
people who I am meant to work with are already here. Hmm. And so beautiful. Yeah. So I, I think everyone will find it funny that a clairvoyant like went to go 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 daddy or Google or whatever. <laughs> That's really funny. So is it, so people just come to you now. What year did all this happen, Bobby? Like, uh, well, all of it, I started actually, I hung up my real estate license in 2016 when I, when it became evident, right? But after that experience, everybody was, had, at the time, had physical illnesses that spirit, you know, was putting in my line. And so I, it's like I went through med school, you know, spirit medicine school, and it is spirit medicine, and it go and it runs side by side with Western medicine because we have an etheric and we have a, a physical body. And I said for years on my website, one day, spirit science it will work side by side with Western medicine, and people literally thought I was nuts, you know, or they would comment, "Okay, kid, you're crazy," or whatever. And so um, that really, when I really said yes to it and, and hung up my license, it was 2016. And since then, and I'm taught every day, and, and every single day it morphs and I, you know, they up level me or whatever in divine timing because that's just how it works. So mm -hmm. um, when you're in alignment, you're in alignment. Yeah. But I understand now that I've had, because it's too clear for me, um, everything, you know, both physically and etherically makes, it just, it makes so much sense to me that I know and I understand because they've showed me other lifetimes of being a, a doctor, a Western medicine doctor and a medicine, you know, a shaman, um, both a male and female and you know so it's sort of it's it's a, it's it's uh it comes naturally because and that's so i was pre-med and then of course i went to become a, a paramedic and all of it. it you know so when we look at life in that way and like wow every single thing that i have ever been through good and bad has all been for a teaching you know, and I feel like teaching healing, teaching healing, teaching healing. And it's so powerful to really, um, when we can start looking at it in that way, instead of solely focusing on what we think has disempowered us so much or victimized us so much is like, turn that into like, you know, this, our innate power and the brilliance of our soul for having signed up for things that always lead to something. Mm-hmm. Oh, a lot of a lot of the audience are basically have pain and inflammation. Would you say always the pain is in that etheric body and that's where the work needs to be done? Yeah, everything. This is what I know is for sure that every single thing, whether and trauma is different for everybody, right? People somebody may experience something that another person would be like, why are you? Why is that so traumatic to you? It doesn't matter at what level or what anything, vibrationally, everything we're experiencing in the, in the environment right now, it comes in first here, into our etheric. And this is why, you know, I was taught that that day in my, Clinton, in my garage, stand up and shown how by God, how to clear, you know, that God blew light into this cone, this this cone shape, light, you know, a light shaped like a funnel, first to teach me, like, blew in before I knew anything about light body and how, and said, light is free, it's everywhere, we, we are light, and it is your responsibility to pull it in. And so that's when I was taught, when I would take a deep breath through my nose, it was like watching, you know, the line would come down, literally. Wow. And of course, my eyes were closed and I wasn't trapped in my human mind. I was standing there being taught this by God. Yeah, I'm here for it, you know. <laughs> and and then I could see my own thoughts that weren't empowering, but literally swirling because I was witnessing 
myself from my higher self. I was witnessing my human self from a higher place. And I could see these thoughts that I was like, oh my God. And then, and, and then God said, you take, you know, look at your hands after I took a couple of long breaths and I, I was pulling the light in. And that's when God said, open your eyes and look at your hands. And that's, I looked at my hands and they were light. I could see my physical behind that, but it was a teaching for the now. For me, you know, that's, I needed to see it. So I understood it. So I took my light hands and I went like this and I took those thoughts, not angrily or disgusted. And that's a really big thing is like com with compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. And I took them out of my space. And I continued on, you know, clearing here and, and, and everything and, and then brought the masculine into my power source at my belly button and then pulled the feminine earth energy up because I had, I was taught this because I had asked in that moment, am I in the right body to serve? Because I had never identified with, you know, it's a whole story, but, and that was my answer, right? It's earth and sky, masculine, feminine balance that's what god called it at that time and it morphed into breathing the light but but i all i needed to do was balance my masculine feminine clear out these thoughts the stagnation i could see the stagnation so yes what i know now is that even my own thoughts it's not just tra trauma coming inward from other places other people other experiences it's our experience of ourselves also vibrates into the etheric body so it's this way it's this way it's fascinating the power of our words you know rings so true to me for for me the ra i realized along my journey you know i was doing all the food and all the lifestyle and all that and i realized that i really had to go back and look at how i thought about myself kind of like my my come from like how how, how was i about myself all the time realized it was pretty crappy and i had to change it. so can you like is there any way do you teach people this like breathe the light like how how is there anything tangible we could um, share with the audience today? Yeah, well, it's right on my website. It's on the home page of my website. Boom, there's a button, Breathe the Light. It's free. Um, okay. I, yeah, I teach it. It's, it's you know, it's it's morphed. So there's a few. So there's the original that, you know, I got nudged because, believe it or not, I'm, I'm shy. Um, but I think, gosh, it was like three years ago or so because, you know, I was just using it for myself. I you know, I didn't know. And then I started teaching it, being guided to teach it when we were still in person, you know, so people were coming to my clinic, I opened a clinic, you know, the whole thing. And now I'm in my gorgeous new, beautiful clinic that I'm astounded by. But yes, it, so the video teaches, it's a way of being though. It's not, is this is just popped in. It's not a doing, you know, the breathing, the light, nothing. You know, what, what came through yesterday at the end of my, my first group uh, yesterday morning, it was so simple. You know, spirits, was, we, everything's far more simple. But they came through and said, uh, I wrote it down. It's, you have nothing to do but be. Because we're in... Yeah, we're in a, um, yeah, there is nothing to do but be. There is nothing to do but be. Um, we're in such a frenzy and it can be to her, you know, and, and to do all these modalities and to this and to that. And it's like, it's far more powerful to just, you know, and to be and, and find something that actually resonates with you, your soul uniquely yours regardless of what anyone else is doing where you're perceiving that someone else is on their path not, none of it matters ultimately because you came here for a very specific reason and this breathing the light what is so beautiful about it because i did it and that's how i ended up here 
you know, it was, I was doing it for my own healing again, for my own healing, my own, not selfishly, but just because I was communing with my peeps and that's what they told me to do. You know what I mean? And so I do it and it's, it's easy, you know? So, and then I realized I understood and spirit wanted me to share this with people, but also share that it's not just, it's not an exercise. Okay, right. I did it. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I don't, you know, I don't see my etheric body like you did. Well, you're not, I mean, not a, you're not, it, you're, it's happening whether you believe it or not. You know, which is why also spirit told me in my, in my sleep one night, I was like, well, how do I explain this etheric medicine to people? How do I explain what I'm doing here? You know, because I don't know how to put the words to it. So people understand. And they said, well, healing is in the medicine you cannot see. So people stop trying to see that this is working and just and have faith, which is the start of everything, right? We're divinely guided high powered light beings. That's just the truth. And if you can't find your way to that truth, it's going to be very hard to find your way past that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into true healing. You can't skip that stuff. Because from that place of faith and knowing that who you are and how powerful you are and that you are spirit and body divinely guided 100% of the time, how can you, I'm going to go around that and I'm going to go to the finish line. I'll get back to that later. You can't. You can try, but then you're going to be frustrated like half the world is right now. And feeling less than because of it. Uh, so true. So true that I, I love that. Like just be, you just got to be. Um Bobby, where what's your website where people can can down download or try the uh, the the breathing the light exercise or not exercise? Yeah, the doing of the of the breathing the light. Yeah, well, I like I, the one piece I heard, I was went on a tangent is that okay. it's not just a doing; it's actually a way to really commune and connect with your guides. So while you're you know in that being and having reverence for your etheric body, your physical body, your journey. It's a way as you're doing it, just like I was taught by spirit, God, we're standing with me. It's the same for you. It, every single person who stands and has the intention to be in this clearing space and this communing and this care for what you said you were gonna do and what you said you were gonna heal, that's the that's the space that will open up and this special you know your 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 relationship with spirit and your communication with your guides is so unique to you that nobody can tell you what that is yeah. and so when you're do when you're being not do it when you're being and do and, and in this experience which is so beautiful that's the place where all of that is available so it's not a meditation. It's, it's just, it's so hard to explain. It's just such a beautiful thing. And so it's right. It's etherecmedicine.com is, you know, go daddy. <laughs> etherecmedicine.com, E-T-H-E-R-I-C medicine.com. Also bobbyogle.com points to it. So whichever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll share the link in the in the notes. Uh, it's kind of making me weep. <laughs> it's kind of making me weep at the um. See, I'm getting all huh? at the at the beauty of it, at the uh, simplicity that we we complicate things so much, but it's so simple and beautiful when we can understand how powerful we are and how connected we are, and that these healing tools are available to us but you're such a beautiful shining light bobby i'm so grateful to have you here today and i know i always ask my guests one last question which is <laughs> what's one thing someone could could do today to improve their health and i know that you're going to say well go 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 breathe. That. yeah breathe the light. breathe yeah. the light it's everywhere just like god told me it's everywhere it's free do you know stand and do it in the grocery store doesn't matter you know all you have to do 
that last is like literally if you're stressing out just you can do it with your eyes open pull in a nice breath for seven and spirit told me that's a that's you know whether they're up there playing poker or not whatever if we, <laughs> say, <laughs> if we i say in my mind earth sky masculine feminine because we communicate non-verbally and boom it's like they throw down their poker chips you know and they're and they're there you ask and you will receive every single Bobby, it's been so beautiful. Thank you so much for Thank being you. on Wellness Life Design Thank today. You. It's been lovely and a real gift to our audience. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.